Signs of the ideal level of sedation, the patient becomes less anxious, their fear is reduced, you'll see less blinking, less eye movement, they'll be taking deeper breaths. Generally, they're still aware of their surroundings. They can respond to verbal stimulation. They might describe a tingling sensation in their fingers or around their mouth. They might also feel warmer. Their skin might feel flushed. They may also get more sweaty. They may also describe a feeling of floating or they may feel that they're heavier. They feel like their arms or their legs feel heavier. And also the time seems to slow down for them. A few precautions. The signs of over sedation is patient becomes anxious. They start getting fidgety. Take the mask off their faces. They might become claustrophobic. They want to get out. They want you to stop the procedure. They start laughing uncontrollably. They might become combative or they might become less responsive to verbal stimulation. If you see any signs of over sedation, simply turn the nitrous concentration down. You can get the effect fairly rapidly. The most significant side effect is nausea and vomiting. Usually less than 1% if nitrous is used alone. There are three things that increase the risk of nausea and vomiting. One is if the concentration is 50% or higher. Number two is the duration. The longer the procedure, let's say an hour or more, the greater the likelihood of uh, nausea and vomiting post-op. And also, if the concentration is swinging wildly, where it's going, say, from zero to 50% back and forth, that roller coaster effect can increase the, the risk of nausea and vomit. Contraindications to using nitrous an individual who's had inner ear or eye surgery in the previous two weeks, if there's an air bubble that remains in the, either in the eye or in the ear, that bubble will expand when uh, the patient is receiving nitrous. And obviously in the ear that'll be very painful, in the eye that could be uh, damaging. Usually one week is enough. We say two weeks just to be on the safe side. Now if the patient has an air bubble that has been placed in for retinal surgery, that's different. That patient may require at least a month after that air bubble uh, has been placed in before they can have nitrous. Also, patients that are severely B12 deficient, that is a relative contraindication because most of the time when they're receiving nitrous, they're not receiving it for an extended period of time. It's not more than 20 minutes or half an hour. Also, someone who's had bleomycin chemotherapy in the previous 12 months, the extra oxygen that the patient is breathing that is a concern here, not the nitrous. Patients can get fibrotic lungs if they're exposed to higher concentration of oxygen. Also, we have to avoid it in first trimester patients and any individual who's been scuba diving in the previous 24 hours. There is an increased amount of nitrogen in their blood and that can be displaced by nitrous. And so it's important to avoid nitrous soon after somebody's been scuba diving. The CDC did a study in 94 where they compared dental offices that scavenged versus dental offices that didn't scavenge. And they found higher incidences of infertility, of miscarriages, of anemias, renal and hepatic problems, and neurologic problems. When they compared that with offices that did scavenge, the risks were back to the normal population. So it's very recommended that if you administer nitrous that you contain it so it doesn't get into the room and to scavenge all that nitrous.